Hello, everyone. This is the most intelligent and magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm just briefly going to go over Leaf Mania, but the main purpose of this video is to also go over my spoiler review of The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 22, Faith. But for a couple of minutes, we'll just go over the Leaf Mania event. I know it already started, but I'll just quickly skim through it. That way, the majority of this video isn't only just about the spoiler review and I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe out there I'm doing all right and I'm staying safe for the most part so let's see we have the leaf stash one and it's 10 maple leaf tokens per one open and it's 50, it's, uh, yeah, 50 of the Maple Leaf tokens for 5 opens. I currently have 60 of them as we speak right now. And so we can get some, let's see, Ultra Mythic tokens, a random Platinum Mod Choice Silver tokens... Some trainers, military supplies, gear boxes. Let's see. And in the second stash, we also have some more Ultra Mythic tokens. Did we have Advanced Mythic tokens? Uh, no. There actually wasn't any in the first one. Okay. That's kind of odd they didn't have any advanced mythic tokens in the first stash, but there's some in the second stash. We do have some Paragon mods, but random Paragon mods. If you get a really good one, you know, that'll be really great, obviously. And we get some gear medals. Um, yep, gear medals. This is the Leaf Mania Gray Market. Just, we'll go over this a couple minutes. For those that don't want to hear spoilers, or who knows, you may have already watched episode 22 of season 11. I did last week, but I recently just rewatched it. And I do got some notes written down for sure. Um, but we'll talk more about it because it's obviously going to be, um, all spoilers. And this is that little, uh, roadmap here. If you do that every day, you let, let's see, we'll get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 60 orange leaves a day. I mean, it's better than nothing, so... And that's the contents of the choice boxes there. So yeah, not a whole lot. It's pretty straightforward, this Leaf Mania event here. It's a nice little event to get us some trainers and stuff we might need, for sure. And, alright, that is going to do it for the Leaf Mania event. Um, portion of the video I should say so for anyone that doesn't want to stick around and hear my spoiler review this is the time to go ahead and go and I do thank you for tuning in and I'll be right back with the spoiler review of The Walking Dead bye guys Hello everyone, and I am back for my spoiler review of The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 22, Faith. Now, I know I'm a week behind, but there is a 
pretty good reason as to why that is, and I'm sure more than most of you already know that reason. No need to really get into it, but right now I'm going to do, obviously, the spoiler review for episode 22. Tomorrow or Monday, most likely Monday, I hope to have the episode 23 review out pretty soon after this. We'll see, but it shouldn't be like a long week, you know, behind like tw episode 22 was. So if there's anyone that's still hanging around that don't want to hear spoilers, this is your last opportunity to get out of here if you don't want to hear spoilers in three two one okay great anyone that's still here wants to hear my spoiler review of the walking dead season 11 episode 22 faith and i have to say acting wise this is a really good episode there's just some acting chops going on by the actresses of Pamela, the actress of Yumiko, Eugene. Negan has some pretty good acting in this episode as well. And we'll definitely get to that. Here we go. Daryl and Carol find Negan and others. So the episode starts off with another Judith um, uh, a Judith voiceover and this voiceover footage is mainly Negan focused some Ezekiel in there but it's mostly focused on Negan and this episode starts with Negan, Ezekiel Magna uh, Princess, Kelly you know our group and then, you know, Negan's wife, Annie, they're at another rail yard, but they're pretty close. They're, like, literally near Alexandria at this point compared to episode 21 when they first got there at the end of that episode. So they're already there at Alexandria. And pretty much our guys that are there doing the labor work for the rail yard, you know... They're pretty much scouting out, you know, pretty much they see only two Commonwealth soldiers in the perimeter and four on the outside. So they're keeping track of the Commonwealth soldiers' routes so they can try to pl plan an escape. And, you know, Negan goes up to one of the Commonwealth soldiers and asks if my wife can have a... You know, if y'all can loosen her workload and just put all of that extra workload on him. And now they just pretty much smack him down to the floor. I mean, to the ground. And that's where we see Daryl and Carol looking off. You know, looking off hidden in the distance. So yeah, they're pretty close to alexandria at this point because the windmill at alexandria is in the background so the, yeah they're like right there at alexandria pretty much and this next part all of this is kind of out of order but it's the least interesting aspect of the episode and i believe we'll get to it the next episode so Aaron, Jerry, Lydia, and Elijah, you know, they're on their way still to Oceanside. They have no idea what's actually going on. That's when we finally uh, see Luke and Jules. Any of you guys remember Luke? And honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't remember Luke because, I mean, he's gone... He's been gone for more than half a season. <laughs> but, yeah, Luke is part of Magna and Yumiko and, you know, that group. That's, you know, I don't know. I don't know where he's been, but I think the actual actor, I think he was working on that Fantastic Beast movie. Um, and I think that's why he hasn't been in The Walking Dead, because he had to go film that. I do believe so. But, uh, yeah, 
when Luke and Jules come across Aaron and them, they finally tell us and the audience what we've wanted to know. They finally tell us what has happened to Oceanside and uh, pretty much the Commonwealth took it over, took all of the Oceanside people prisoner and is forcing them to work labor just like everybody that is at Alexandria. And honestly, they could have just told us that like episodes ago, but at least they finally told us. And Luke and Jules suggest, you know, getting far away from the ocean side is probably the best thing right now because uh, pretty much Rachel, who was the uh, who is the sister of um, I'm trying to think of the girl's name, um, Cynthia, I think so. I'm not sure what has been happening with Cynthia, but I guess. Um, I guess Rachel is now the leader of Oceanside, and I'm not sure if she, like, got killed or something, but pretty much Rachel told, um, Luke and Jules that y'all need to go find the others, get away from here, and warn them, and, you know, warn them about what's happening, so they all agreed to just get out of there and just go the opposite direction away from Oceanside. Now, here's probably the most interesting part of this episode. Eugene's trial. And I got some stuff written here about... I got some additional notes written for Eugene's trial. We get to the trial. This is uh, what Pamela is saying. Pamela Milton. This is what she's saying when she's on the stand. It was the worst day of my life. My trusted colleague, General Michael Mercer, was with me. He took me to the morgue where Sebastian was. And this is some great acting. I mean, I gotta give it to the actress that plays Pamela Milton. This is where her voice just begins to break. All I wanted to do was hold my son... Like, the acting and the convincing of her crying there, of her voice breaking, I gotta admit, it was really fantastic. The actress, she's doing such a great job as Pamela, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, she says, all I wanted to do, all I wanted to do was hold my son. And she looks at Eugene and says, you killed him, you took my son, this murderer needs to pay. So... That's pretty much all of the interesting dialogue that Pamela has to say. In just that little bit, her acting chops, oh my gosh, so good. She's so despicable, but it's so good, though. I gotta admit that. And now Yumiko stands up to question Pamela about the lottery tickets that she handpicks, right? So she says, tell me about the lottery, Governor. And she's like, uh, what about it? And what does it mean to you? Yeah, what does it mean to you? Is it a lie? Just like your son said. And she pretty much says that the lottery is all about opportunity. When Sebastian, you know, he even admitted that Pamela handpicks the lottery winners. And she tries to just, you know brush it off to the side but you know we all know that it was recorded it was admitted on a recording so she can't really get out of that and she can't lie her way out of the um lottery about Sebastian saying that my mom hand picks the lottery winners and um yeah so okay so we're going to get We'll get back to Eugene's trial. I don't want to jump ahead. Okay, so this is where Daryl, Carol, Maggie, Rosita, Connie, and Gabriel make a plan to sneak into Alexandria. So Daryl goes, Connie, I should say, Connie goes with Daryl, Carol, 
you know, she has Maggie come with her and Rosita wants to go with Carol and Maggie, but Carol says, you and Gabriel are our best sharpshooters. If something bad is to happen, we're going to need y'all to cover us. And I have to say, I really like Rosita, especially in this episode and probably this whole season. This is probably my favorite season with Rosita in it because she is a caring mother and she's really concerned about Coco, her baby, and, you know, Gabriel's child, too. But yeah, she's very worried and, you know, she's very worried about her baby, her baby girl. And so Connie goes with Daryl, Maggie goes with Carol, while Rosita and Gabriel stay behind to be lookout because, you know, obviously Daryl and all of them, they have an advantage that the Commonwealth soldiers don't know about. It's... They know the area. They know there's sewers that go straight to Alexandria that the Commonwealth soldiers don't know about. And pretty much those four are able to get in to Alexandria from the sewers without any issues. So that's a huge advantage they have over Commonwealth in this situation. And, um... So we cut to Negan, Ezekiel, and I forgot to say, I almost forgot to say, that guy, Tyler Davis, who uh, back in part two, he was a Commonwealth soldier, but when um, they were having a party or a gala or something like that in part two, at the Commonwealth before all of this confrontation and all the stuff that's going on, he decided to just uh, yell, like, we need to stand up to the Commonwealth. We need a resistance and all of this. And the Commonwealth pretty much took him away during the party and they made him disappear. Where, well, Tyler Davis, he does make a, an appearance in this episode as one of the prisoners at Alexandria. So I honestly didn't know if we were going to see him again, but a uh, princess points him out in the beginning. And um, so, yeah, we'll cut over to Negan and Ezekiel and they decide to go sit down beside Tyler Davis because they're all eating the slop that the Commonwealth has given them just enough to, get by and get back to their uh, labor work and uh, hang on one second okay I just needed a sip of water okay so Negan and Ezekiel are sitting with Tyler Davis and they're trying to you know they're trying to convince him look we need to stand up to the warden and the commonwealth here we just need to all form a resistance and Ezekiel says, we know that you stood up to Pamela, and that takes guts, and he pretty much says, you don't think we haven't tried that? Some people that shouldn't have ended up dead have ended up dead, and two Commonwealth soldiers go to Negan, and they tell him to get up, and he's like, no, I'm not getting up, not until you tell me what you've done with my wife. Because they do take her off, but they, like, take her off to an infirmary or, or something like that. Um, no big mystery there. So the two Commonwealth soldiers, they take Negan, uh, they take him to the warden's office. And Tyler Davis says to Ezekiel, you know, y'all are on y'all's own. So we get back where the Commonwealth soldiers take Negan to the warden and... Before the one comp, this one Commonwealth soldier, um, let's see, he was wanting to get a transfer from Alexandria to another outpost. Why I'm bringing this up because this is pretty important for the episode. This one Commonwealth soldier is trying to get a transfer to another outpost because something about his um brother's been sick 
with something and he doesn't know how long he has so he was trying to get to a he was trying to get a transfer to another outpost and the warden tells him you know 197 uh he tells him yeah your transfer has been denied and that's where he explains to him that um, I was just trying to get transferred because my brother, you know, he's been very sick and I don't know, I don't know how long he's got left. And the warden, just him being an asshole, he says to him that you should have went with me. You should have came to me about the transfer instead of going around me. And he tells him that, you know, your duty here has been extended by six months and Negan is obviously paying attention and he sees he sees the mad look on the Commonwealth soldier's face and he sees him ha he's he sees that he's got one of his uh fists clenched and he just but he just walks out and Negan is noticing he's like okay that's my end maybe we can get this particular Commonwealth soldier to uh turn potentially so pretty much what the warden has Negan dragged in the office for is there was this little note that Negan had that was counting and keeping a track of the Commonwealth soldiers like uh, tracks from earlier in the episode and it must have um, it must have fell out of his pocket without him realizing it and they found it and He's like, he tells Negan, you know, I know there's got to be a traitor among my mist. And, you know, Negan pretty much says, um, you know, I don't know about that because, you know, other than my wife, those people that you claim that are mine, you know, they hate my guts. And to some extent, that is pretty much true. <laughs> That's pretty much true. <laughs> There's like one or two that probably do. I know definitely one that still holds res holds a grudge against Negan. Um, definitely Ezekiel, but we'll get to that. And he pretty much wants Negan to try to find out who the traitor is. Even though it's all of them, he thinks, he really thinks that Negan can scope out our people and find the traitor and the warden pretty much says, when you first came in here, I thought you were a leader, but real leaders don't, you know, have to have, real leaders have to have the guts to take to do what is necessary. And trust me, the warden, uh, he has no idea who Negan was and what he was capable of. So Negan is just, you know, he's playing dumb at this point. He's like, all right, I'll let you have your win here because you think you know what you're talking about when you really don't. So they uh, take Negan to go see his wife and they pretty much have a conversation um, where, you know, Negan says, I knew, I knew assholes like the warden He's like, in fact, I was someone like him a long time ago. And she pretty much says, no wonder why they hate you talking about our people. She finally kind of gets why some of them don't necessarily like Negan when he uh, tells her that. And she pretty much says that I'm going to meet this baby and you're going to meet this baby. I don't know, Annie, are we? I don't know. We'll find out. So... We're gonna get to uh we're gonna get back to Ezekiel and Negan. Ezekiel and Negan's confrontation. So both of them are back out there shoveling dirt and Ezekiel pretty much he still holds a grudge toward Negan for all of the stuff that happened back in season seven and season eight, but that dude, um, not Henry, but Henry's brother, Benjamin, that got killed by the Saviors, Negan, you know, he didn't know anything about that. That was, um, oh, what was that guy's name that was part of the Saviors? Uh, he's the one that killed him, not Negan, but, um, 
Jared. I think his name was Jared. Yeah, Jared is the one that killed Henry's older brother back in season seven. And, you know, Ezekiel pretty much says to Negan, he's like, I'm looking in your eyes and he says, you're looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. And Negan is straight up with him. He's like, no, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about regarding Benjamin, Henry's older brother. And no, he doesn't. That was part of uh, Gavin's uh, group. Jared specifically, the one, uh, the one, I was about to say whisperer, the one savior that Morgan held to the gate and let the walkers just eat him up in uh, season eight, I believe. Yeah, it was late. In season eight, so Ezekiel pretty much sh says to Negan, uh, "You know, you don't deserve a new, uh, you don't deserve a brand new life, and you sure as damn don't deserve to be a father." And yes, I know the man that Negan was, and he did some really messed up things, and he acknowledges that. But I gotta admit, even though we all love Ezekiel, I don't know that was kind of on that was uncalled for by Ezekiel I honestly wouldn't have been surprised if Negan would have picked that shovel up and just wham just took it to Ezekiel's head but no he doesn't do that I wouldn't have been shocked if he would have done that for saying that to him and he tells Ezekiel you know what Ezekiel you go ahead and keep living in the past you do you and I'll do me and I'm going to do what's right for my kid. So he ends up going back to the warden and the warden wants to know from Negan, do you got a name for me? And it's implied that Negan is going to pin it all on Ezekiel because he made that comment about him not, you know, about him not deserving to be a father and whatnot and honestly I thought that at first when I was watching the episode and um you know we're going back to Daryl uh Daryl and Connie are still in the sewer uh Carol and Maggie have made it in the house they're looking around that part is it gets interesting toward the end but um let's get back to the trial because there's some very good acting chops with this with this trial. All right, so Eugene has a speech here, and I wanted to uh, write it down. I wrote down most of it, not all of it. So this is what Eugene says uh, because he asks if he asks the judge if I can uh, speak on your behalf and. The judge says, uh, yeah, I'll allow it. So this is what Eugene says. The way I see it, I've been living on borrowed time for well past a decade now. By all rights, someone like me should have met my maker on the very first day things, fell up, things started to fall apart. And the thing is, I would have if it weren't for the aid of friends, friends who've had friends who have changed not only me, who have not only changed me, but changed the hearts and minds of so many others. I am beyond certain my fate will not discourage them from keeping that going to helping others to find the courage to do what's right. I was not always a good man. I knew what was happening. I couldn't take it anymore and I hated myself for it. So I did something in my own little way. I changed the world. He's probably referencing season eight, the war with the saviors on that. Uh, let's see. And I learned when he sang this last part, he's looking at Mercer. And when he's saying this whole speech, he's looking around to the people. 
But specifically when he says this last part, he's looking at Mercer when he says this. I learned one person can do that, and sometimes all it takes is one person to do that. Thank you, that's all. Because, you know, Ezekiel, I mean, not Ezekiel, excuse me, uh, Eugene, Yumiko, and Max are trying to get through to Mercer, and I believe at the end of the day, I do believe that Mercer is going to end up doing the right thing, and... You know, they're wondering if he's aware that Princess got taken. And Yumiko goes to see him and he says, yes, I am aware that, you know, Princess was uh, taken. But that last little part was directed at um, Mercer, especially because they're trying to convince him to do the to do the right thing, to speak out against Pamela. And I think he will end up doing the right thing. But let's see. After that speech, the judge hands down the verdict, and Eugene Porter is guilty of first-degree murder, and they say that his execution is going to happen within the hour, and of course, Pamela Milton, oh gosh, she, as the verdict is being said, she's walking away, smiling, grinning, ear to ear. Oh, man, I just, you know, I have a prediction about Pamela Milton, and I'll get to that when we get to the end of things. But, ooh, that, that evil witch, man. But she's doing such a good job of being that character. At first, I thought Pamela Milton was just bland, boring, vanilla ice cream. But, ooh, she's now turning up the villain charm. That's for damn, that's for damn sure. So we know that, you, according to the Commonwealth, Eugene is guilty of first-degree murder and that they're going to plan on executing him. So let's get back to um, Alexandria. So we get back to Alexandria and all of the, the Commonwealth Guards, hold on before we continue. Okay, the Commonwealth soldiers wake up Ezekiel and all of them in the, in the dead of night, and they get them all lined up near the windmill, and the warden announces to all of the workers that there's a traitor in our midst, and, you know, earlier when I said I thought that Negan was going to pin Ezekiel for all of this, well, surprise, surprise, Negan actually tells on himself, and he's the one that's, you know, I guess what Ezekiel said to him about him not deserving to be a father got to him, so... I thought, I honestly thought he was going to pin it on Ezekiel, but no, he actually pins it on himself, and they get Negan on his knees, and they're prepared to uh, kill him with a firing squad, but I wasn't necessarily worried about Negan, because AMC spoiled the fact that he's getting a spinoff with Maggie, so I wasn't that worried about Negan. Now, if they didn't say anything about any spinoffs, oh yeah, I would have been really worried about Negan. I'm not going to lie, but I was like, yeah. I was thinking in my head, what way are they going to get out of uh, killing Negan? So they're planning on, uh, you know, they're going to plan on killing him. And then Annie, she decides to break free and go toward Negan. And so they um she's like no please don't kill him you know so the warden decides to get her back and then she's really just a crying and then he changes his mind the warden and says that you know what we're not gonna have no martyrs here so he's like you know bring me her and they bring annie up to negan and he's like no no that wasn't the deal you know take me leave her alone and they are prepared to kill not only Negan, but they're prepared to also kill Annie. Is this the moment where Annie actually gets killed? 
I've been predicting that Annie's going to get killed in a messed up way. Well, they're prepared to do it until Ezekiel steps out of line and gets in front of the firing squad and then followed by Negan, I mean, not Negan, followed by Ezekiel, Magna, Kelly, and pretty much our group, along with Tyler Davis, all get in front of the firing squad, and the warden is like, I appreciate your bravery and nobility, I don't know if nobility is a word, but whatever, he says, I appreciate all of your bravery, and he tells the firing squad to, to kill them all. And remember when I said that one Commonwealth soldier was pissed off at the warden about not letting him go to a different outpost because his uh, brother was sick? Well, the one Commonwealth soldier actually turns on the Commonwealth soldiers and he actually kills one of the Commonwealth soldiers and I figured that might have came back into play, and it sure did. And that's when all chaos breaks out. The warden grabs Kelly, takes her hostage, and that's when um, Negan, not Negan, um, no, Negan's still tied up down on his knees. That's when Daryl comes up from behind and stabs the warden in the back. And, um, you know, one prediction was kind of wrong. When I said that I didn't think we were going to see the kids ever again in the main show, well, it turns out that Herschel, Maggie's son, is actually at, at Alexandria, and he's tied up in a separate room all by himself, and... You know, they ask if they, you know, they ask if he's seen Coco or the other kids, and he's like, no, I don't, I don't know. So, did they really take every kid per kid per outpost? Did they really do that? Like, that would have been, I mean, I guess that would have been a way to really separate them, unless all of the kids are there and they just happen to maybe find them in the next episode so yeah maggie and carol they find herschel so my prediction so far is kind of wrong about not seeing the kids i i honestly didn't think we were gonna see the kids for the rest of the show but so far we have found well they have found herschel and you know rosita she's really pissed off because you know she can't find Coco she's obviously pissed off and worried that she can't find her baby girl and she wants to know she goes goes to the warden who is still surprised even who is still not surprised man my words right now the warden who is still alive despite being stabbed in the back by Daryl she wants to know where's where's my little girl where's coco so she he pretty much is uh taunting her so that one commonwealth soldier that the one commonwealth soldier shot earlier is coming back as a walker so um we pretty much don't have to worry about the warden after this episode because you know since Rosita can't get answers from the warden, she decides to grab the Walker Commonwealth soldier and she lets the Walker go to town on the warden, specifically on his eyeballs. And that's pretty much the end for the warden. So I thought maybe they would have saved the warden for the spinoffs, but maybe they got other villains in mind, I'm sure. So, yep. The Warden is, uh, he's no longer a threat, and it was pretty nasty, I'm not gonna lie, but it was well-deserved, because that guy was a piece of work, for sure, and I really enjoyed the episode, for sure. Oh, and the episode ends, we're, we're going back to Eugene and the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth soldiers are preparing to have 
Eugene execute it because they have a sack over his head and as they're going to go to a certain area to go execute Eugene, there's Mercer there waiting for Eugene. They take the sack off Eugene's head and he's like kind of looking around wondering what's going on. And he's pretty much crying and accepting his fate. He thinks he's going to die pretty much at this moment. He's like looking around what's going on. And Mercer says to Eugene, it's time to mess some stuff up. And that's where the episode ends. So, it seems like Mercer is going to do the right thing after all. I'm very interested. I'm very interested to see where this goes. So, is Mercer just playing Pamela Milton? And he knows all of the crooked shit that she's up to. And he's finally waking up and smelling the coffee and he's got a plan of his own it definitely seems like it because i'm pretty sure the door to where you know the door that was behind mercer might have taken them to go execute him but it seems like he's gonna cut eugene loose and i thought this was a really good episode acting standpoint for sure the stand the standouts of this episode for sure were Pamela Milton, Yumiko, Eugene, Negan, just acting wise, those certain characters for sure. And I'll tell you, you know, Yumiko, she has killed it with her acting this third part. I mean, she's one of the better acting the one of the better characters as far as acting in this third part for sure and before we end things i'm gonna give my prediction as to what i think is gonna happen to pamela milton i think one of these three possibilities are entirely possible prediction number one i think they're going to kill Pamela Milton. I'm not sure who would be the one to do it, but someone in our group potentially, I think, is going to kill her. Predi um, prediction number two. I think Pamela Milton will live in this prediction, but I think she'll be thrown in jail for the rest of her life. While her jail cell might be a luxury jail cell, but I do think in this prediction she'll be thrown in jail for her corrupt crimes for sure. And prediction number three, I think they'll ban her from the Commonwealth. I think they'll exile her and they'll just leave her to live on the outside world by herself. And I honestly could see them doing one of those three. I don't know which one they'll do because you might think they'll go one way and they'll go another way with it at the last second. So I think either she'll either get killed by someone in our group, she'll either be thrown in jail, or she'll be exiled from the Commonwealth forced to live out in the open world by herself. I definitely don't see her being in power after the end of the series. And originally, I would have thought that maybe Maggie would have... Uh, I thought maybe Maggie would have originally wanted to take control of the Commonwealth to try to make it a better place. I honestly don't think the Commonwealth is a bad place itself. It's just the corrupt people in power that makes it bad. You got to cut that corruption out of the Commonwealth. You got you got to get it out. You have to get it out and it can definitely be a pretty decent place. And it definitely starts with Pamela Milton for sure, and I know there's others in there for sure. But yeah, you got to cut that you got to cut all that corporate that corruption out. You got to cut it all out at the Commonwealth and you got to get new people running the Commonwealth and the Commonwealth, I think, can be a pretty decent place. 
So, yeah, originally I would have said that my prediction would have been that maybe Maggie takes over the Commonwealth at the end of the series, but that's definitely not going to happen because Maggie and Negan have their own spinoff, so I could see maybe Max or Mercer running the Commonwealth. Probably one of those two. I could definitely see Max, a.k.a. Stephanie, or Mercer running the Commonwealth. I, I can definitely see that now for sure. Originally, if the spinoffs weren't happening, I would have guessed maybe Maggie. I could see her being a good leader for sure, but that's not going to happen. And... Yeah, I'll definitely try to get out the spoiler review for The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 23, pretty shortly. I'll definitely be working on uploading this. Um, this should be uploaded on Sunday. And I don't think I have much else left to say. I think Angela King, this third part, I think she's been clicking on all cylinders in this third part for sure. I have not been disappointed and I think I think it's going to end satisfactory. I, I really do. At least I hope it does. So far it's been pretty f much fire at this point and I don't think I have much else left to say so that's going to do it for this one. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and for your continued support. Or, if you're new, welcome in for the first time. All of you are very awesome, and I thank you again. And don't forget to hit the bell and switch on all notifications so you know the second I upload to YouTube. I am Buck Beak, and I'm going to go fly away back to my nest. Until next time, bye guys.